captured by hostile Indians. Oh, that was the philosophy. That's why, they put them in that's why they put them in there because the plan was if they breach the walls and it looks as if they're going to overtake the fort, kill the soldiers and civilians, the women and children were going to be ordered to be blown up because the fate of being blown up was a better fate at the time than being captured by these hostile Indians. Well, in the end, Charles, the Indians didn't attack the fort. We told you they probably would not attack a fortified military installation. Okay, that'll take us to another little subtopic, which is the wagon boss <coughs> fight. How did their strategy work on the part of the Indians to get the white soldiers out of the fort and kill a bunch of them? Pretty well. Well, they would make a second attempt to repeat the Fetterman victory in the summer of 1867. They're going to try this same strategy again in the summer of 1867. They're going to try to lure soldiers out so they can kill them. On August 2nd of 1867, approximately 800 Sioux warriors attacked the woodcutters and the soldiers that were protecting those woodcutters at a cutting area about five miles from Fort Phil Kearney. On August 2nd of 1867, approximately 800 Sioux warriors attacked the woodcutters and the soldiers that were protecting them at a cutting area that was about five miles from Fort Phil Kearney. What's a cutting area? Forested area where there's trees. Okay. Well, the reason they call it the wagon box fight is because during the battle, the 26 soldiers and six civilians that were out there cutting wood took cover inside an oval of wagon boxes that they had already used as a stock corral. In other words, while they were out there, they took the wheels off of their wagons and put the boxes down and put their animals in there so they wouldn't run off. Well, once they got under attack by these 800 Sioux, and by the way, how many are there total for them? 26 and 6 is 32. They take cover inside that oval of wagon boxes that they had used as a stock corral while they were cutting the wood. So it's going to be 800 against 32. Well, the warriors launch a series of attacks against that corral and those 32 uh, men, 26 soldiers and 6 civilians. The soldiers were commanded by Captain James Powell. And they were all armed with breech-loading rifles. Breech-loading rifles. Anybody know what a breech-loading rifle is? I have one. They were the rifle of choice at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Anybody know what a breech-loading rifle is? You load it. If your baby's born breech, a lady, the baby's born backwards. So the breech-loaders are ones that are you pop up, put the 4570 shell in, pop it down, shoot it, pop it up, put the 4570 shell in. They're carbines. Most famous, I have one. Uh, is a Springfield 1876 carbine, was the ones used at Little Bighorn, but these were obviously earlier years. Okay? Well, Captain James Powell and those 32 men unbelievably hold off these 800 warriors until a relief force can come from Fort Phil Kearney. They hold these warriors off. In the end, three of the men were killed and two more were wounded inside that makeshift corral. Three men were killed, two more wounded. Now, Indian casualties, again, this is really quite an estimate. They estimated that somewhere between five and 60 Indians were killed and somewhere between five and 100 were wounded. In other words, they really had no idea, although they knew some were. Now, the thing you have to know about Native Americans is they attack this corral. If they start taking casualties, they have a tendency to what? Back off. Back off. So I'm assuming 
the numbers must have been pretty decent, either killed or wounded, or they would not have backed off. You know what I'm saying? But that's kind of how they were. So Powell was able to hold them off. And the wagon box fight turns into a success, so to speak, on the part of the soldiers and civilians of Fort Phil Kearney. Okay, that'll take us to the end of Fort Phil Kearney. Whatever happened to this fort, like I said yesterday, it was a short-lived fort. When was it, when they start construction? July 13th of 1866, right? In January of 1867, think about that, July, August, September, October, November, December, five months after the construction began, Colonel Carrington was relieved of his command at Fort Phil Carney, and they restationed him at Fort Casper. So five months after the beginning of the construction of Fort Phil Carney, Colonel Henry B. Carrington was relieved of his command and was restationed at Fort Casper. Well, Carrington's military career was destroyed. There were a lot of false accounts of what happened at Fort Phil Kearney, and he spent his entire civilian life after leaving the military simply trying to clear his name of false charges of incompetence during the time that he commanded Fort Phil Kearney. So he had a tough retirement and spent his civilian life trying to clear his name. Well, progress happens, Charles, and by 1868, what had been built through the West that's going to make it kind of obsolete to have these forts on the Bozeman Trail? Railroads. So by 1868, the Union Pacific Railroad had reached a point in the West where travelers simply bypassed these Bozeman Trail forts and rode the trains. So again, by 1868, the Union Pacific Railroad had reached a point in the west where travelers could bypass the Bozeman Trail forts. And so the United States negotiated another treaty with Native Americans that closed the Bozeman Trail and closed the forts that occupied the Bozeman Trail. <coughs> That treaty was simply called the Treaty of 1868. So in 1868, the Treaty of 1868 between the government and Native Americans, Plains Indians, simply closed the Bozeman Trail and closed the forts that were built on the Bozeman Trail. So in early August of 1868, Fort Phil Kearney was simply abandoned by the United States Army. As a result of the Treaty of 1868, in early August of 1868, Fort Phil Kearney was simply abandoned by the U.S. Army. So my question is, why in the world don't we go see a fort that still stands if it was abandoned in 1868? The Indians burn it to the ground. It was a symbol of a disruption of their way of life, and as soon as that fort was abandoned, the Cheyenne Indians burn it to the ground. Finally, in 1963, Fort Phil Kearney was designated as a National Historic Landmark, and that's why we're able to go visit it as we will this year. So finally, in 1963, Fort Phil Kearney was designated as a National Historic Landmark and is open to the public today. And again, the great thing about this fort is when we go there and we get our little guide, the man will tell us where what was here and what was there, and you get to kind of put things together and uh, we'll see. Okay, now listen. We will not have a review tomorrow. We will have an open note test on Tuesday. So be prepared. Okay? So just kind of review your notes. And you'll be able to use your notes on Tuesday. We will watch the video tomorrow for those of you that are here.
those of you that are not here, we will not miss anything. You are done with the material. You simply need to put yourself in the study mode to a point and be ready for an open note test on Tuesday. Okay? We'll see if we can.